Good morning. God bless each and every one of you. It's good to be here. God bless you, Brother Ed. It's good to see you and your family. God bless you, brother. It's good to see you. For the Sunday school, for, sister, for the younger kids, we had a total of six students and three Bibles. And for the adult class, there are 33 students and 20 Bibles. And the offerings were 29 for the adult class and zero for the uh, children's. Amen. Well, there's lots of people that are not here. We're going to remember them in prayer. I remember Brother Ike, Sister Karen, the different ones. Amen. Brother Joe and them, they're out at the cabin. Brother Carlos, Sister Melissa, they're... I'm sure if I try to go through all the names, I'm sure I'll miss somebody. Um, how it works, and I don't want nobody to fill that out. They say, well, he didn't mention my name. It, well, it's not so much that I remember, but God knows. You know, that's what counts. Don't rely on my brain. <laughs> oh, my. Let's stand together. We want to remember also the Easter meetings. They come up pretty quick. We want to be in prayer for those. And if you have any unspoken prayer requests, let it be known with uplifted hand. And um, if we give the microphone to Brother Dave, you know, open us with the word of prayer. We just thank you, Lord, that we have this opportunity still in this country to come and meet together. And we, Lord, we pray that you just be with us this morning. Break your word to us and help us to receive it. And be with all the requests on the people's hearts. I ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. <clears throat> when what a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God. ship so we'd be almost in the water <laughs> this is the right side that's the wrong side no I mean the right and the left <laughs> you guys here to worship him you know our brother Carlos introduced a song to us I love that song it speaks of my testimony it's different now have you heard of it it's different now now, if it's different now in your life, I want you to sing like it's different now. 
it's different in mind. You know, huh? The devil don't forget that it's different in mind. Because I'm talking to him all day, every day. I like to sing this because it keeps him underfoot. Now, if you feel it in your heart, let him know that it's different. Okay? I once was a lost man. I had no peace with him. up this morning offering. I remember one time I didn't want to have nothing to do with the church. But it's different now. I'm the first, second, or third one to come through them gates when it's service time. Because it's different. Brother Jared, is it different? Oh, <laughs> Dear Lord, we just want to thank you for this day. I just want to ask that you bless this service, Lord, and be with the request, and that you bless this offering now. And we ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, brother.
Let's sing that song. He knows my name. So many songs to sing to him. All of them express our lives in one way or the other. How we feel toward him and how he feels toward us. personal testimony for each one of us. I have a maker He formed my heart And before even time began My life was change your other service this morning. But Jim's going to speak to us. Let's stand, stand. Let us stand and we're going to sing only believe. That's, that's so simple. I don't know if anything easier to do to bring his presence Rest assured that you have eternal life. Just believe his word. It has nothing to do with understanding. Just believe it. I believe that. I can't explain it to you, but I believe it. Oh.
you have a need this morning, I'd encourage you to give it to him. Say, Lord, I have this on my heart. I have troubles with this. I, I'm surrendering unto you. And watch what the Lord can do. Is anything too mighty for our God this morning? I can say he is a living God. I heard them say once, you know, if it's under the blood, not even the prophet will see it, you know? So many times Satan wants to remind you of your past, of something that you did. Oh, but it's under the blood this morning. If it isn't there, you could put it there. Say, Lord, here I am. It's that simple. We'll sing it. Oh, now I believe. As we... When now I believe. Oh, now I believe. All things I. for a minute, greet you, a couple things to talk about, but I'm glad we are able to believe, but it's what we believe. You can believe a lie and be damned by it, but God revealed to us the truth. If you were here for Sunday school, Christ is the mystery of God revealed, amen. We have something to believe, we have something to receive. The bride will only receive the word of God. She can't receive anything else. She's a virgin to that word, amen. Well, greetings, everybody. Once again, here I am filling in. And a uh, couple of announcements. One, I'm a grandpa again for the 18th time. Jihan and Cheris. Healthy, uh, healthy little boy. Lachlan Bates. What was he? Seven pounds and one ounce. 20 inches long. But everyone's doing health. They're doing well. Pray for Cherith. She's a little girl, and nah, that was a pretty big boy for her. Good thing she didn't have one as big as John, though. He was eight pounds, six ounces. I, that's about as much as Cherith weighs, I think. <laughs> so but keep them in your prayer, but I'm really happy that we have another, grand, another grandchild. Um, there's a lot of them. And uh, the plan is that we're going to have a baptismal service this afternoon for Amen. Sister Cindy Lou. Amen. I want to tell you the devil has fought so hard. I was here till 1.30 in the morning working on this baptistry, trying to get it working, and everything that could go wrong did, but he's defeated. So I have to go into town and get a little O-ring right after church. Uh, somehow the coupling on the tank didn't have an O-ring when it, someone must have stole it out of it or something. So I was here trying to get everything working last night. You just uh, So Lord willing, we're going to have a baptism. We'll have to test it. I haven't had a chance to test it yet because that little piece was missing, but uh, everything should be ready to go. And... Now I want to give a literal testimony. Prayer changes things. Sister Alice, all those years praying for your family, hallelujah, huh? Four of your daughters going to be in church all baptized. That, I can't even imagine. That's a mama's heart, right? Praying for your babies, you know? And then to see them all, we're just going to go after your brother Tim now. We'll get him in here too. But you know, you all have been praying for Julia. And you know, here's what the Bible says. You raise a child in the way they should go. When they're old, they will not depart. Parents will see your kids go through all kinds. That just says the devil's after you because he ain't got you. 
But you know, she's got, what a powerful testimony that girl has, and I just really appreciate it. She doesn't realize how strong she is to me. You know, we all feel like we fight the battles and we lose sometimes, and we feel like we've failed God, but her little testimony, now her husband, Daniel, wants to get baptized. As soon as he gets back from the slope, we're putting him in that tank. How, I mean, that just blesses me more than I can tell you. And so I think that's why the devil's fighting. He knows once we have this baptism, well, we're going to start using that. <laughs> so <laughs> go find them out there that the, the last seed, uh, there's someone out there that just needs it. They need, they need to repent and be baptized, and then they'll get the Holy Ghost. That's the promise. Then that Christ is the mystery of God revealed will be in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So anyway, did I miss any announcements? Keep uh, Brother Ike and Sister Karen in prayer. They should be coming up here pretty soon. I missed them a lot. It's going to be nice to have him back. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, amen. Yeah, amen. I don't have to be the filler anymore. <laughs> well, and then it's, it's this thought that God put on my heart. It's been a while coming. And I was working down here last night thinking about it, and it just got me. So this is probably for me this morning. So bear with me as I preach it myself. Let's just stand together and we'll open our scriptures to Isaiah. Yeah, so uh, you know how the Lord comes. He doesn't come to condemn you. He comes to convict you. He comes to bring you closer to Him and get you to line up to His Word. So let's go to the book of Isaiah. One of God's people just like you. You know, Isaiah, these men in the Bible, they're just like us. We look back at the Scriptures and think, man, those guys are looking at us. Hallelujah. Let's, uh, chapter 6. We're just going to read um, the first eight verses. Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face. With twain he covered his feet. And with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth, and said, Lo, this has touched my, thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Let's just pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we feel your presence here this morning. That great holy, holy, holy is the Lord presence. From the right from the throne of glory, the Shekinah, Father, we just pray that as it's housed here in your tabernacle this morning, we'd give room for it, that you would come forth the living word, Lord, and make it live for us. Lord, just forgive us of anything. We are truly people of unclean lips. We dwell amongst the people. But Father, that coal of fire would come this morning and touch us all. It would purge our iniquity. It would purge our sin. We'll give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Add your blessings now to the reading of the word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I have a little thought this morning. Here I am, Lord. I want to title it, Being Available. Amen. You know, and I, this thought's been kind of on my, you know how God's been dealing with us. He's telling us, you know, that He wants to reveal Himself to us more than we even want it. And, you know, just you look at David crying out for more of God in the Psalms 42. We preached on that here a while back, and I just hear it in the different messages coming forth. God calling us, getting us ready. I believe it's time. It's time for a bride to be ready, to have a, a, a you know, a supplied garment that, without spot or wrinkle. He gave us His righteousness to be clothed in. And I believe it's time. And I think that's what he, He's calling us, and He wants us to be available. You know, when John was, Brother John Davis was preaching, he preached out of Genesis 22, and uh, he was talking about when Abraham took his son up to be sacrificed. And there was something that just jumped out to me out of that. 
Don't mind the distractions. I believe God has something for us this morning. That's how, you know, when you go through the battles, it's usually because something good's coming. <laughs> you know, Satan tries to rob you of a blessing. He does. Every time you start to go through trial, that's just God. Look at what happened with Abraham here. It was chapter 22 where John was reading. In the first verse, it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. God comes to try you, to test you. Everyone that comes to the Lord has to be tested and tried. You're not going to come without trial. Because trial is the only way you get character. And the only thing we take with us when we leave here is our character. There's only one way that character is forged, and that's through trials of your you know, testing. Your, you, know, your, you say, I believe, Lord, I believe. Do we believe? He's going to test to see that you believe. No matter what he does, a believer won't go nowhere. Abraham didn't go. And when, it, when he, he came to Abraham to test him, to try him, to tempt him, Abraham, he said, behold, here I am. You know, Abraham's answer when the trial was, is here I am. Abraham, he, he was on his way. You, you read the story of Job. Job didn't know why he was going through all that. God didn't tell him. But he was being tested. And in the trial, he said, here I am. He was available. I liked his attitude. Then go look at verse 7. It's amazing, the scriptures, 7 and 11. I got seven, seven granddaughters and 11 grandsons. I was just thinking 7-11, and here my, my scriptures were 7-11. Verse 7, and Isaac, now this is his son, his family, spoke unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He was available to his family. Look at Abraham's call. Whenever someone called, he just said, Here I am. He was available. He was available to God during the trial. He was available to his son. In verse 11, and the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven, and he said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. When the messenger had a message, he was available. You know, God will come to test you. He'll come to try you. Are, are we available? What are we, how do we spend our time? What are, we, what are we, you know, when God comes to us, are we so cluttered with so many things that maybe we don't hear? Or when he comes, we're too busy. We don't have time for him. You know, when the messenger calls us today, do we have time to hear? Are we saying, here I am, Lord? How much time do we spend push and play? I'm just, you know, I, I wonder. You know, and then I, I think um, there's a church age book, you know, <laughs> during, the, during the church ages, um, the Thyatiran age, you know, that was that dominating female age, that church, you know, becoming a dominating female. But in there on page 223, he's talking about someday we want to get there and have him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. How many want to hear those words? Amen. Well done, my good and faithful servant. What does the word servant mean? You serve something. What are we serving? Well, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's all capitalized there in the book near the bottom of page 223 if you have a church age book. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. It is hard to be always a servant. Being a servant is not easy. You know, and, and serving something bigger than yourself, and especially when you're doing it because you want to. You know, we, we've all read about slavery in our country back in the day and around the world. It's just, that's forced. To, to serve something because you have, to, you have a master that's making you. But when you, from love... Choose to be a servant. It's not easy. But those who spend and are spent for others will one day be seated with him in his throne. It'll be worth it all then. What? Serving others. Uh, it's just, you know, I want to go. I wonder sometimes why we don't want to gather ourselves together, even so much the more as we see the day approaching. Everybody gets a revelation and wants to go isolate somewhere. I'm, I'm serious. I got some quotes here that we're going to read, and just, Lord willing, that maybe it won't take a long time, but it doesn't take God no long time. We'll just give him all the room he needs. What are we serving, and how much service? What is it that we're really serving? You know, well, we're going to serve others, but why? He puts you in service to go out there and be part of his redemptive work. 
The book of Acts was his plan. He said, you go tarry in Jerusalem until you be filled with power from on high. Those ones were all just like, they were like Isaiah that, you know, that time, sitting there going, we're unclean, you know, Peter, all those guys, they had their troubles. But he said, I- I'm going to take care of all that. You just go out there, you obey. If you believe, tarry in Jerusalem and tell. And on the day of Pentecost, we know what happened. That pillar of fire, <laughs> that coal of fire that touched the prophet's lips, that pillar of fire came in that room, and those men went out there and they started serving. They were serving others. But it was God in them doing His work. It was a continuation of His work. So when you think about what you're really serving, but why do we serve others? And sometimes we've got to be careful with that. Let us labor for the Master. There's the Master. From the dawn till setting sun, let us talk of all His wonders, love, and care. And when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Don't we all want that? He talks about patience here and how you get character. But I just wanted to read this a little bit down the page. He says, I know thy works, and the last be more than the first. This is certainly remarkable. This is on page 224. As the darkness of the age increases, as the honor roll of the martyrs grew lengthier, they gave their life for the gospel. And you think about, well, those guys had to go out there and get fed the lions. They were tortured. I mean, there were so many. If you've read Fox's Book of Martyrs, it's just the blatant truth of what happened. I don't even like repeating it. It just makes me sick. But it's true. It's a history. But this age is harder. That's what the prophet told us. The pressures of this age are harder. It would have been easier to give your life at the stake than to live in this age and fight all this. You know, I'm going to take a little deviation here. I just feel inspired. You know, I I teach a lot, companies, and I just did it for the railroad. Um, They wanted time management. (laughs) And in my history, or my, my research, they say that the reason that people spend so much time on their phones and stuff is because it, it becomes a habitual thing because the brain emits endorphins. It literally is a habit-forming thing because we get rewarded by some endorphins. Your brain, it's just the same thing that happens when, like the, the runners, they get the, the second high or whatever they call the runner's high. It's, it's, you know, the people that eat hot peppers. Your brain emits dwarfins. They actually get a high from it. The, the devil's got so much distraction out there. He has so much distraction to try and take your time away from being available for God. And if you go do the research on it, it's pretty amazing. They, they've, they've researched it. It's as much of a, you say, well, I'm not an alcoholic. Uh, I'm not hooked on that. Well, if you're addicted... To having your brain be constantly entertained. They say you take a little rat in a cage, and if you feed it a little thing dropped through the cage at a certain time every day, it makes a habit where that, that, that animal is there waiting. But if you just feed it randomly, constantly, pretty soon the thing's always looking, always looking, because it doesn't know. It's, it's, a, it, you know, it's like a pattern that happens. It's kind of like trying to stay focused in this age. is like driving. How many of you have driven in Alaska in a blizzard? I mean, you got all this coming at you, and you're trying to stay on the road, and you can't hardly see anything, and you have to be really focused, right? And that's what it is. The devil's got so much stuff coming at you, like a blizzard. It's like distracting, almost hypnotizing. But God wants you to stay focused on the goal. We, this is not the time for us to be messing around. But the devil, that's why it's a hard age. It's mentally hard. People are going insane. They're losing their minds. And it's just so much information now coming at you like this. Used to be when I was a little kid, we had an old phone on the wall. I mean, literally like a big old phone that you had to dial like this. And guess what? There was no answering machine. We didn't even know who called. If we heard it ringing, we ran in there. Eventually, they came up with Star 69 and you could tell who called you, but that wasn't even foolproof. And now it's like if you're driving a car and you hear your phone go blip, you have to see who texts you. Now you're distracted. It's distractions. There's so many distractions. The devil knows that. That's why it's harder to live in this age. Because the devil knows exactly what to do to keep you away from what's important. Eternal life is living for others. And so what he said here is he said, as a, you know, as a, as a great, that grew lengthier day by day, they worked all the harder. 
Here they were getting persecuted, but they worked all the harder. How tragic it was that in the Ephesian age, love waned. And truly nothing is said of the increased labor of love in the other ages. But in this age, in the darkest of all ages, they served him even more. What a lesson that is. There is no ceasing of this gracious service of love unto the Lord. See, unto the Lord. Who are we serving? If we're not careful, sometimes we end up serving people and forget why we're, we're serving him first. He's the one that put us in service. It's his work. Not our work. It's not about what we want. i got a little story coming up here in a minute that I'm going to tell you to take a, draw a parallel out of. <laughs> but rather than increasing of it, right? So they, they increase their service. That is the secret. Let the enemy attempt to thwart our service to the Lord. Our reply is increased service. When the faint are crying in fear, that is a time to shout the victory. Amen. You know, when all this world is going completely crazy and they're, 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 they're looking at, look at it, it's fear everywhere. Amen. This is time for us to shout the victory. Amen. When all these distractions are coming to take us away, we should increase our service. Amen. We should increase our time. Amen. They say Susanna Wesley, raised how many kids, 15 or 16? 19, 19 kids. Can you imagine moms? <laughs> Here's, here's pro mom, pro grandma that raised seven. Uh, I take my hat off. I can't even imagine, right? I, I was there, but I had to go work. She was the one, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Mother, the five Gospels. But Susanna Wesley just said, with, with the more responsibility, she had to pray more. She spent, I got her little book of prayers at home on my shelf. Some of her prayers she just wrote down to God. She spent time in prayer because that really made her more effective. The more, the more the pressure, the more prayer. Amen. You say, well, I'm a young person. I'm looking at all these young people in here. What about me? You're talking to these adults. No. You know the story of Samuel. You can find it in 1 Samuel 3. How old was he when God started calling him? Seven or eight years old, wasn't he? Anybody in here seven or eight or older? Well, guess what happened? He's, this, he's there serving the Levite, the priest, the preachers. God just, his mom dedicated his life to the God, so he went to serve Samuel. He's laying there as a little boy in his bed, and he hears a voice call him. The Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I, but he thought it was Eli. Oh, get this, young people. It's not the preacher talking to you. You don't need to go to the preacher and say, what did you say? It's God calling you. When you hear that, he uses the preacher, but it's not the preacher. What you need to know is God is talking to you. Amen. When, when you feel his presence come to you and you hear that little voice, that's God talking to you. Amen. I don't care how young you are. And so it kept, it kept coming and he'd go to Eli and Eli goes, I didn't call you. The preacher, the preacher didn't call you. It's God calling you. And he kept, finally, Eli says, if it does it again, just say, Lord. And so here it came again. And it said, the Lord called again. Then Samuel answered, speak, for thy servant heareth. Amen. You know, his, call, his, his thing was the same thing as, as Isaiah, the same thing as, as Abraham. Here I am. When God's calling you, just be available. Amen. He wants you to be available. He wants you to have time set aside for him. Amen. If he's Lord and King, then what does that mean? If back in the days, the king, you were subject. What are we subject to? We hear so much about being subject. Subject to what? Who is the king? Is it the church? No. Is it the Levite? No. If the church is doing its job, then we're just saying what he said. You might hear his voice because that's how he chose to do it. But he's the one. He wants a personal relationship with you. Not you and the preacher, not you and the church, not you and mom and dad. He wants a personal relationship with you, Caleb. He does. He's calling you. You know that. You've heard his voice. That little thing that speaks to you. That's him. That little quiet voice. But sometimes we let so many things distract us from that. That's true. And then all the preachers will get into big arguments over doctrine and everything, and then that distracts you. It hurts young people. It hurts young people. They see all the adults and they go, you're supposed to be Christians and believe the message and you act like that? What have we gotten ourselves to? 
Do we even act like Christians? What does the word Christian mean? Christ-like? And Brother Bram said, if you call yourself a Christian, God calls it marriage, and he's going to hold you accountable. What kind of a wife are we? The Lord revealed himself to Samuel and Shiloh by the word of the Lord. That's how he reveals himself to you. If, if this body was standing here this morning, right now, and you could see Jesus like that, he would tell you, I, I can't reveal, only my Father can reveal to you who I am. Flesh and blood can't do it. He would point you to the word where you could find him. Because it takes a spiritual revelation. We heard that on Christ the Mystery of God Revealed this morning. He said it takes a revelation. That's the only way you can know him. So what are we subject to? What, what, is, what, is our, what is our Lord and King? How do we spend our time? You ready for this one? Put on your seatbelts. I don't, I don't want you to hear Jim Bates. I want you to hear the word of the Lord. You say, Brother Branham, I'm no prostitute. I don't altogether mean sexually. Prostitution's on a higher level. You can prostitute your time. How much time do you give to him? If we're all honest, I want you to think about that. If he's our Lord and King, if he's our husband, if, if my wife treated me half the time like I treat him sometimes, I don't know how that would even work. I can tell you this as a husband, I used to see things in my wife that frustrated me because we're humans, and I get all upset. Well, then I go, well, I'm going to go pray about that. And this is not, this is men. I'm telling you the honest truth. 80% of the time when I go to pray about her, he goes, oh, that's just the way you're treating me. And she's just reflecting that. And then I have to stop and go, oh, it's me. It's my relationship with him. A wife is just made to be a mirror of you. You want to know how the church is doing? Look at the sisters. That's what the prophet said. That's a reflection of what, what we're doing. So most of the time now when I see her, i got to go and pray on myself. It's the truth. How are you spending your time? How much time do you give him? Prostitute your own selfish motives going around saying, well, I belong to this church. I'm better. That has nothing to do with it. Here I am. I was here until 1.30 in the morning working on this baptism and fighting the devil the whole way, and the Lord's telling me, How, what are you doing? I said, well, I want to baptize my sister. He goes, I'm, I got the, I'm not going to get ahead of myself. I'll just wait. <laughs> the Holy Spirit will speak to your heart, and you'll say, I want nothing to do with that. I'm too busy. We quiet that little voice. Remember the story Brother Bram told of that miner? He'd struck it rich. He found all the gold, and man, he had his bags of gold, and he was going to go to the town the next day and cash in, and that was it, man. He was done. And that night he laid down thinking about all the things he was going to do with his money, and his little faithful dog started barking. I remember the story. Yeah, yeah. He's out there at the door barking, you know, and he's like, shut up, you know. He kept telling the dog to shut up. The dog kept barking. Yeah. Kept telling him to shut up. Finally, he just got mad, said, dog, you're bothering me. I got to sleep because tomorrow I'm going to go to town and I'm going to be rich and it's all going to be over. So he took his gun and shot his dog. He fell asleep. Well, there was bad guys out there that came in at night, killed him and took all of his money. He silenced that, that little voice, <laughs> the warning. You silence that little voice enough, pretty soon it'll stop talking to you. You don't want that. That little voice is the Holy Spirit. That's God. He's saying, Samuel, here I am, Lord. Abraham, here I am. Isaiah, I, I, I don't feel like I'm worthy. I can't do anything. Don't worry about that. He's got a coal of fire. He can take care of all that stuff. All he wants is you to be available. What's the matter with you? Committing adultery with the world, that's what you're doing. You say, I belong to church and so cold and indifferent. You say your petty prayers. Oh, I hate that Pharisee thing. You pray and make every comma perfect, every period just perfect. You, you pray so beautiful, you can, you can talk to God like that. You're listening to what you're saying and punctuating your prayer. Oh, God, help you turn loose once and pray and stop saying prayers. Sometimes we just have these little memorized prayers that we just like throw up a little like Hail Mary, I call it. Hail Mary, Mother of God, blah, 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 Our Father. You know, they, the Catholics, they have them all memorized. They say the same thing. It's just like a little, it's a little repetition. 
Thanks for putting that quote up there, by the way. You can all see that. It's time for us to get serious. He's calling us. He's calling, he's calling his bride to be ready for a wedding supper without spot or wrinkle, and he has everything for you. We just have to accept it. Prostitute our time. I'm not a prostitute. He said it's, it's worse. It's a spiritual level. You look at somebody on the street working and selling their self like that, he says, but when you prostitute your time on God, he calls you a prostitute. Amen. If we were all to look in the mirror and be honest, we prostituted our time. Yes, yes. Do we want blessings? How many want blessings? Yes. Okay, put your seatbelt on. We're going to hear the word of the Lord. Yes. He's calling you. Oh, friend, I hope this little lady doesn't take this too personally, but it's my daughter-in-law who's setting present now. This has been the greatest week of her life. Keep her in prayer, by the way. She lost her husband and... She's old and she's battling some stuff. Sister Lois, Brother Billy Paul's wife, that's who he's talking about. He, says, bring, Billy, he said waiting for Billy to, to bring the car back in the lobby of the hotel on the ballroom floor, they were having a rock and roll and some kind of an amusing dance and little children, little boys, no more than 12 years old or less, smoking cigarettes. Little girls. The very, and the little lady looked at me and she said, Billy, pray for me. That's Sister Lois talking to her father-in-law. All week over in her room, I heard her singing songs. I heard her singing last evening before she went to church, my favorite song, Down From His Glory. Yeah. I love to hear Brother Dave sing that. She started reading the Bible, and she's pretty near read the Bible through in this week. You go to singing hymns, you start reading the Bible, and that stranger will appear to you. See, if you want God, He's always there. He's trying to call you, but sometimes we just need to draw close to Him. The Bible says, draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. The devil's out there with all these distractions, his blizzard he's thrown at you, but he said, resist the devil and he will flee from you. That's the word of God. She started reading, she started praying, she started singing, and he drew near her. That's, he, says, he says, just like those ones on the road to Emmaus, along the road, they begin to talk about him. We just seen that the other day, Sister Legina. You go to talking about him and he comes. Spend your time talking about Him. He's the most important thing in our life. He's our Lord and our King and our Savior. You know, thinking about what He did for us that day on Calvary. And yet we want to prostitute our time. We're ashamed of Him sometimes. Lord, help us. They walk with Him through the day. The reason we don't have the spiritual blessings, you said you wanted blessings. We have too much time to watch television. Too much time to read the newspapers or listen to something we ought not to be listening to. And we are not redeeming the time. We're giving it to the things of the world instead of our time to the Lord Jesus. And the Bible said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word Amen. that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Christians live on the word. Sam, the word of the Lord was revealed to, to Samuel and Shiloh. It was the word of the Lord is how he heard. Mm. Our, our, we should be, we should, we're not sufficiently impressed with the word in our midst. I wonder. If it was, then we would, what's the most important thing? It's where you put your time. Right. We can say whatever we want to say, but your actions prove. Right. What, what are we doing, you know? You know, uh, I mean, that's what a wife's supposed to do, is serve her husband. Take care of him. Wait on him, feed him his food. Even when we act like boys. <laughs> Don't treat us like them. <laughs> we deserve it a lot of times. But what about, I'm just, that's a type of us and our husband. Yep. He wants us waiting on him. He wants us to feed the word back to him, that food. <laughs> it's the spiritual food of, of, in due season. How much he likes to hear us talking about that. Right. That revealed word of the hour. He, he, when he hears us talking and get excited about, you know, just like those on the road to Emmaus, you know, and they were even, they were like, haven't you heard? Are you a stranger around here? We, 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 we thought this was it. And he goes, oh, fools, and slow to believe all. Amen. Slow to believe all. You know, if, if we gave him more time, I believe there's something he's trying to reveal to you. He wants to reveal it to you. But we don't act like he's the important thing. He'll give us whatever. He'll take whatever time you give him. You know, you want a little blessing? Oh, Brother Bram said, pray and read your Bible. 
Brother Billy Paul told me one time, his dad told him, he said, big prayer, big blessing. Little prayer, little blessing. No prayer, no blessing. We, you know, we want blessings, but we got to do what he said. We take these things, we're not redeeming the time. we got to live by the word. Pray and read your Bible every day. Press play and obey. I remember when I was young, Michelle and I raising all those kids and poor as church mice, living from one paycheck to the next, half the time didn't know what we were going to do, but we trusted God. But I, the most important thing to me was those tapes. So we started getting the little cassette tapes. And we ended up buying the entire library. It was on my living room wall, wrapped around the corner. Everyone that walked in my house was like, what in the world? That's a lot of tapes. You know, like 1,100 and something sermons. And some of them are two to three tapes a piece. That cost over $6,000 back in the day to buy all that. We did a little at a time. Whenever we got dividends, we bought tapes. The word of the God being the passion, right? You, you think about it. I'm not trying to brag. I'm just telling you. It's, that was the passion. Well, what happens sometimes? Uh, now we can have access to it on our phones everywhere, you know? It, it is, it's, there's no, it's like what? Nothing. It's free. You can stream it for free. You can buy the little you know, chip for $35 with the whole entire message table on it. You know, I just wonder, and Brother Billy Paul told me, I had all those tapes, you know, and I've been listening to them. Every time I get a box, I'd start listening to them. And bro, brother, remember how many brother, brother Ricardo, Sister Buffy? Yep. Brother Ricardo, he would come to my house. We both had to work the next day. We'd be up to two or three listening to the tapes. He'd get, you get a new box? Yep, I'm coming over. He'd come over and we'd start taking those tapes out. It, you know, when I was in the world, man, we'd stay up all night partying. And we'd have all kinds of paraphernalia around. Well, now there's books and Bibles and tapes. I'm like, man, this is a whole different way to party. But that's my passion. Amen. It's just because God changed my life. He took me from nowhere he, and, and made me, you know, gave me a sound mind and an incredible, now 18 grandkids. That's his blessings. Just what, you know, grace is what he did for me. Now I, I want to serve him back. You know, the, the, the book, the, the, the scripture we, we quote in, in Ephesians, by grace you're saved through faith. How many have heard that scripture? By grace you are saved through faith. And that faith was not of your own. God gave that to you. It's a gift. He gave you the gift of faith to receive grace. Amen. Right? He said, not of works. So say, but he said, but, but you're foreordained unto good works. The very next scripture. It, works is what we do for him. Right. Works don't earn you nothing. You can't get anything with works. Right. It's by faith alone. <laughs> that was Luther's message. But that, that, that faith that you got to believe, that came from God by grace. Amen. He gave you that gift to believe him. But then he ordains you for good work, so we should be like what he's done for me. I want to serve him. I want to give him more of my time. He should be the most important thing to us. Brother Billy Paul told me, he says, don't listen to your second tape until you can live your first one. I was like, uh-oh. I've listened to a lot of tapes. i got a lot of living to do. Right? Sometimes we get become scholars of the message. We can quote it. We can do all that. But do we live it? Is he really first in our life? It's just like calling yourself a Christian means something. Well, calling yourself a message believer should mean something. You believe the message? What does that even mean? Do you just have an idea? Or do you just entertain the thought? Do we just like have some concept? Or do we have a relationship with God where we become one with Him and He's our Lord? And that's our time. That's the most important thing. Like we heard the other day with Brother Ram on the Hebrews. He said we ought to give the more earnest heed to what we've heard. Let's say anytime we let it slip. He said we should be busy every day trying to get people to Christ. He said, that's worship. When you're at work and you hear someone swear, take them aside and say, there's a better life than this. You hear someone say they're sick, there's a healer. He said, that's worship. Every day you should be worshiping him. He said, we sit around like warts on a log. We should be lively stones. Where this is our passion and we act like it. Where people see you and they know you're the bride of Christ. That token's applied. No matter what, they see you coming and going. They know that Christ lives in you. Okay, we're going to look at another scripture, and then we're going to wrap this up. This is in Luke, a very familiar scripture that we've all heard. Book of Luke, chapter 10, and let's look at verse 38 to 42. A really familiar story about giving our time and being available. Luke 
Luke chapter 10, verse 38. Now it came to pass, as they went, that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Sometimes we get so busy serving that we miss the main thing. It happened to me here in this church years ago before I went to Texas. I literally had five different hats in this church. That's a true story. I was a treasurer, I was trustee, I was assistant pastor, I was Sunday school superintendent, I was, and I was in charge of the building program. Brother Frank would just give you a title, right, Brother Ron? Right. And, I, and I got so busy serving, my, my wife said, well, you're working on the pastor's house, you're working on the church, what about our house? And I'm like, well, honey, well, we're serving God, we're, you know, eternal life is living for others, and so while I'm doing that, your ministry, this is my ministry, you're part of that. But when God called me to Texas, I got along with him, and he said, you uh, that's all great, but you're missing the main thing. You've lost, you've lost track of the main thing. You get so busy serving, you're encumbered about with all this, you know, I'm here working on this baptism and God's speaking to my heart. What are you doing? I said, Lord, I'm serving you. He goes, are you? I said, okay, Lord, here I am. Here I am, Lord. What do you want me to hear? What do you want me to do? Am I seeking you? Am I putting you first? Am I, am I just passionate about my time with you? Or do I got so many distractions, get it away? Is there so many other things that are flying at me every day that I get kind of like in this numb state where I'm just having to go get some relief and watch a cat video or something? The next thing you know, three hours later, you get addicted to it if you're not careful. You know, I was thinking about this story, and there's a little story I heard one time, and I'm going to tell this. You might have heard me say it before. Story about a little girl who was raised in a Christian home. She was just a little girl. And um, maybe Harper's age. How old are you, Harper? Ten? About that age, eight to ten. And she was raised in a Christian home, and every night her dad would come up and give her prayers and everything. And her mom, they just had a great Christian home. And, and she was this little girl that went to the store like girls do and liked the shop. How many girls like the shop? It never goes away. It's like... Little girls become big girls, and they still like to shop. But she'd go to the little dime store with her mom, and she saw this little ring. You know, it wasn't very much, just a little fake ring that they have there. And she really wanted that thing. So she started working and saving her money. She told her mom, I want this ring. And her mom said, well, do your chores. Maybe you'll get some allowance. So she worked, and she worked, and she worked, and she worked, and she saved up and saved up. And finally, she got enough, and she went and bought that ring, and she was so proud of that thing. It was like, I did this, you know. I get it. Now, there's a moral in this story I want you to hear. But so, when her dad came home from work, she was real excited. He went up to go say prayers with her that night. He goes up the stairs, and she's there in her bed. And he thought, she thought he was going to be really super excited about this. He didn't seem to be so excited. He says, um, would you give that to me? Oh, no, Daddy. Couldn't do that. Every single night, he'd go up there, same story. She'd be on the bed. He said, would you give me that ring? Would you give that to Daddy? No, nope. no, 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 I couldn't do that. Finally, weeks go by. One night he goes up there to say prayers with her, and she had her little head bowed, and she holds her little hand out, and he put his hand out there, and she dropped that ring in there. And he goes, I've been waiting for you to do that. And he reached in his pocket and says, I've had this real diamond ring all along, and I wanted to give it to you. Sometimes we're hanging on to something that we think we've earned, that we've done for ourselves, that I got this position in the church because I have did all this. And we're hanging on to it. And it means a lot to us because we struggle to get it. But God wants to give you something without money or without price. He's got something worth more than all the things you could ever earn. All your works could never even touch it. I mean, it's invaluable, the ring he wants to give you. His grace. And we struggle and spend our time on so many things thinking that we're earning points. And we're, all he wants you to do is accept him. And this, this message he brought... He went to Calvary to bring you this message. That's why he went to Calvary. 
The, the, the benefit of Calvary came in our day and showed the resurrection. He proved the resurrection to us night after night, day after day on the platform, showed that it was the same Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and forever, just changed his veil and said, this is me at the platform. Brother Bram has nothing to do with this. This is me. I am the one that died for you. I'm the one that's here redeeming you. This is me, the word. Can you hear my voice? How we, how, do we take it serious enough to, to get alone? You know, it might not sound fair, this little girl. Oh, that sounds like a really sad story that dad would want to take away her ring. No, he just wanted to give her something that was way more valuable that she didn't earn but was just given to her by grace. That's what he wants. All he wants is you. Now, the other day, part, this is probably, I don't know, two or three weeks ago. You know, Brother Nate Dutton, he watched him grow up. Another one of those ones that struggled. You know, go th- you have to have your own experience, no matter how you're raised. But I got to go down and teach in August uh, in Chicago at Oracle, and um, it was a pretty big deal. And as soon as I heard I was going to Chicago, I called Nate. Hey, I'm going to be in your town. Let's hang out. You know, I just love to hang out with Nate. He's just such a good guy. Him and Sister Zadessa, they just, he just right away, you're going to stay at my house. Come on over, you know. So I did. I went down there and stayed with Nate. And we just like, every once in a while, we'll just send a quote to each other. And he sent me one the other day. This is before John preached about Abraham. This is before, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff that the Lord put on my heart. But he sent me this quote, and I want to read it to you. It's out of Hear His Voice. But listen to his still, small voice. Every one of you people who profess to be Christians. How many in here profess to be a Christian? Okay, he's speaking to you then. He said, everyone who professes to be a Christian, listen to his still, small voice. Get yourself quiet before him. Don't let the washing hinder. Okay, I know you sisters have to do laundry. I know how it is at my house, laundry day. Don't let the, the laundry hinder. Don't let your work hinder. Don't let nothing hinder. Don't, don't even let nobody know what you're doing. Just go before him. Get up in the woods somewhere. Get out on the side of the road. Get in your secret closet. Close the door. When the kids get out of school, get down there on your knees. You've heard all kinds of voices everywhere, but just get down there and stay until those voices are silenced and you begin to lift up. It'll change you. Oh, man, I'm feeling that. Do you feel that? That's him. He wants to change you. You know, we sing changing me. He wants to change you into his likeness and image. That's what he wants to do. He's calling you. That voice is calling you. It's not Jim Bates up here. I'm just your brother. You know me. I'm a mess. I'm just saved by God's grace. And if I have anything to do is just get out of the way where he can come and speak to you. That word right now that's speaking to your heart. And he's telling you, get alone. Get away. Don't even tell no one. Just get science before him. You've heard all these voices And those voices are silenced, you'll begin to lift up. Just like Sister Lois started singing, started reading her Bible, all of a sudden he came. You want him to come in your life? Do you want him to change you? There's a recipe right here. Steal away somewhere, spend some time, put him first, get up in the morning and say, Lord, I need you today. I can't do nothing without you. I can't eat. That's why I wear slip ons. I can't hardly tie my shoes without him. So even I can't put slip ons on without him. This morning I was so sore from climbing. I was up and down that stairway a hundred times and all that baptism up on ladders on top of the water tank. I, I'm getting to be an old man. I'm feeling it. I got up this morning. I was like, oh, I said, Lord, I need you. I can't, I can't do nothing without you. I need him every day. Now listen to this. It'll change you. It'll make you different like it did this little Samuel. It'll do something to you if you'll just do it. Now it, it'll make you what you should be. It'll make you the kind of Christian that you ought to be. Now, we might be like that sister that told that testimony with Brother Bram that time. You can come to the piano, sis. Where she testified, that, that black sister in his church. She says, well, she goes, you know, I, I ain't what I want to be and I ain't what I ought to be. She says, but I sure ain't what I used to be. Mm-hmm. You know, God was changing her. And we, we want to be more, how many want to be more like him? Well, then he told you, if you want that, He said he'll do it for you. If you'll just do it, if you'll just get quiet, if you'll just get alone. How many of you have a decision in your life and you don't know what to do? There's two, there's there's a crossroads. You know what Brother Brown said to do? You want to know the secret for that? He says, you go in there in your closet somewhere, get alone with God, quiet, where there's no one around. 
He says, and don't lean one way or the other. Sometimes we go in there asking God because we want to go this way. We really want this, but there's two roads. One by faith, one by sight. <laughs> there's two roads. And he said, you go in there and you talk to him just like you're talking to me. He said, just talk to him out loud. Say, Lord, I have these two decisions to make, and I really don't know what to do. I really kind of been wanting to go that way, but I'll be neutral before. I'm, here I am, Lord, I'm available. Just tell me which way you want me to go. He says, just talk to him. Just talk it out. Talk to him like he's sitting right there. He can hear you. Speak out loud. You're quiet. There's no one around. Don't worry about anything else. He says, then get quiet and don't say nothing. Just wait. He says, now whatever way you lean when you get up from there, you go that way. Because he said, it, the Bible says, you acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your path. If you go in there and you're serious and say, Lord, I will go whichever way you tell me to go. He doesn't come up with some big loud fanfare and say, okay, Jim, now go. He just, that little bump will come up. You'll pray through, you'll get quiet before him and all of a sudden you just feel, I'm going to go this way. He will lead you. He wants to lead you. He wants to draw you closer to him. He wants to make you the kind of Christian you ought to be. He said he'll make you what you should be. He'll change you. He said it will change you if you do that. So in this busy, crazy world where we have all the distractions and Satan knows exactly how to do this, Laodicea, try to get us cooled off, there's going to be a bride of Christ that's going to say, no, I feel that you're calling me to a higher, you're, you're getting me ready for a marriage supper. And the only way is when you and him and this word are one. You have to be just like him in his image. If, you're, if the woman reflects the man, then we got to reflect him. And he is this word. That's what he wants to do is change you. Oh man, do you, you know, how many feel like he's been changing you? How many want more? Then you just get alone with God. Spend your quiet time with him. Get away from family. Get away from everybody. Just you and him alone. Shut in with God. And watch what will happen. He promised he would do it. He knows how to lead you. He knows how to guide you. He's got you, man. Brother Jared, he, he saw you way back at the time up there in Shag. He knew when you were a little boy. He saw that you would be here, sitting here, married to this incredible lady. I don't even know how you pulled that off, but awesome for you. <laughs> but I know the only way that you could be married to her is you have to be a super good guy. Yes. That's how God does it. He's been calling you. How long now with no alcohol? What's your testimony? Four years, huh? That's what God does. Changes you. Now my son-in-law, Daniel, he's going to get baptized. I just can't even, I, you, you wonder how in the world that stuff happens. But God knows. We don't, we don't see all things, but he does. You love him? Let's stand together. What are you playing, sis? Here I am. Here I am. Let's sing that little song. I turn it back over to Brother Elisha, but I needed some help. I'm the Lord of sea and sky. I have heard my people cry. Oh, who dwell in dark and sin. My hand will say I who made hallelujah he made the stars he's got you Run to him. Hallelujah. Be available. Be available to him. He'll put you in service. It won't always be easy, but he'll be with you. He might try you, but here I am, Lord.
Amen. Isn't he wonderful? Yes, he is. You know, I, I can relate to someone that's sitting in church. That's before maybe God really starts dealing with this. I can relate to someone being afraid to move, being afraid to move forward. I can relate to that. There was a time when I was afraid to do anything in a church because I was afraid of what people would think. I was afraid of what might happen. You know, Satan wants to scare you and keep you in a spot where you were not, he wants you, so you're not going to move forward. Oh, but you can move forward tonight, or this morning rather. You don't have to be afraid of Satan. Satan's already lost. You know, I thought of that man that when he say boo to the devil, the bigger he got. It's time to set our wings. We could rise this morning. Set your wings. Set your wings. We can set our wings this morning. Satan's an old. He knows his time is near. He knows that he's defeated. The question is, did you know that he was defeated? Did you know that the devil was defeated? Well, I'm here to tell you that, yes, the devil is defeated. You don't have to fear him no more. There are two roads may take one by side. Father, Lord, we just love you this morning. Thank you for your word, Lord. 
Help it to stay in our hearts and minds, Father God. Lord, we just love you. We look forward to this evening. Baptismal, Lord. And Father, be with your children as we go. Be with Brother Ike, Sister Karen, Lord. Be their portion and the ones that couldn't be here this morning, Father. We love you. We give you honor, glory, and praise. Amen. Amen. When there are two roads, you may take. It's by grace. 